I'm John Archibald for Reckon at AL.com. Here today with Sue Bell Cobb, former Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, running for the governor of Alabama once again. Uh, welcome to uh, Thank you, John. The show. Campaigning hard? I am campaigning hard. We're going from one end of the state to the other. You might uh, know from her previous campaigns that she made this little light of mine famous in your campaign. So we'll ask you to sing that now. <laughs> I will be glad to. Mm -hmm. And playing the piano was a big part. Uh, right. You know, I had somebody in Walker County um, after that ad came on, and you people can go on YouTube and, and see it now. Uh, Sue Bell Cobb, Let Her Shine. Um, this gentleman looked up at me and he said, I handed him a brochure and he said, you're Sue Bell Cobb? And I said, yes sir, I am. And he said, well, I've just got one question for you. Do you really play the piano at church? <laughs> you know, I was expecting And, and you it. do? Yeah, I did. I played the piano for 10 years for Children's Choir. Uh, and I said, yes sir, I, I do. And he said, that's all I wanted to know. But you know, I, I think that what's really important for people to know is that I've been a judge for 30 years. And so I really have been up close and personal and seen firsthand the significant challenges that people in Alabama face. Well, uh, you were really one of the last really mm -hmm. important elected officials as a Democrat in Alabama, okay. Chief Justice, and a, a lot of people were a, a bit put out with you when you decided to walk away from that. Uh, would you tell me, tell us your decision, why you did that? Sure. I had been a judge for 30 years and having been a judge and worked morning, noon, and night to try to fix the gaps, you know, I've been introduced one of my favorite one of my absolute favorite introductions is a gap filler. So I had really been working on juvenile justice reform and drug courts and I had for four and a half years as Chief Justice had taken everything I had learned through my entire ju judicial career to try to fix gaps, try to help people, um, really fix people rather than just fill prisons. And uh, at, at, after four and a half years, there were a number of issues, but mainly it, my mother had become ill, and I decided it was the right thing for the courts and absolutely for my family. And I was with my mother when she drew her last breath, and I will, that is something I will never, ever regret. Do you think it was uh, harmful to Alabama? I'm convinced with everything that I knew that it was the right thing to do. Um, but I will tell you this, it's interesting that the, really the only negative thing one of the very few negative things people say about me is that I left too early, not stayed too long, right? <laughs> and I'm back, and I've never, I retired after 30 years of wearing a robe, but I never retired from my love and concern for the people of the state of Alabama. And I have continually worked um, as, as I could, uh, going back and forth from Montgomery to Evergreen, my hometown, to help with my mother. Uh, I've continued to work on the issues uh, to improve the lives of the people of this state. What is your fundamental political belief that you would want people to know? What do you stand for most in politics? I think that what I stand for most is, is, is that I truly believe that we need bold leaders who care more about people than a party. I think toxic partisanship is killing us, and I want people to know that I am running as a Democrat, um, but that that's not my religion, you know, that I'm running because I know that I'm the best person from both sides of the aisle to fix the big problems. My, my philosophy, I think you would probably have to say, is I believe a rising tide raises all ships. I believe, as I wrote an article for the Book of the States in 2010, I wrote an article then entitled um, how, The Power of Fixing People Rather Than Filling Prisons. And that's what we've been missing here in Alabama. I mean, we've, we've just stuck with the old, uh, old way of doing business, you know, rather than more effective, data-driven um, pro programs like drug courts, like model drug courts, uh, that I expanded while I was Chief Justice and received a national award for that. Um, I think my philosophy is do your job and do it the best of your ability and make sure you're doing everything for the right reasons, but then go beyond that because so much of what I did, it wasn't really just in my job description. It was because I cared. And I truly believe it's time to have a governor who cares more about the next generation than the next election. Well, uh, obviously with Doug Jones winning uh, the Senate, it get, breathes sort of new life into the uh, to any Democrat running for office, but I mean, with all due respect, I I can't decide whether the Alabama Democratic Party is, you know, mobsters or stooges at this point. I mean, is does the leadership of the party stand in the way of good candidates being elected to office? I'm sure that there are many people throughout the state that have great concerns about the leadership of the party. Um, I, they've certainly voiced those concerns to me. Um, what I think that Doug Jones' election showed 
is that when people become, when voters become involved, when voters become informed and engaged, we get a good result. And that's what happened on December 12th. You know, up until December 12th, I was the last Democrat that had been elected statewide. And I gladly gave up that title on December 12th to Doug Jones. And Doug is going to do a good job as a U.S. Senator, that's for sure. Um, but we, we need uh, a Democrat Party that reflects the present-day Democrats today. And those are people from a wide range of walks of life, um, not just certain factions. We need a party, you know, that understands that we need to reach to the middle. You know, that's where we govern. You know, you don't govern from the fringes. You know, we have to reach to the middle because that's really, there are a lot of things we can agree upon. Um, so let's focus our efforts on that and try to get something good done for the people. You really believe a, believe a Democrat can win when Roy Moore is not standing on the other side of that ticket? I won in 2006 against a very well-respected Republican who outspent me two or three to one. Um, I believe that the people of Alabama are good people, and if you, once they see what the qualifications are, that they're going to person, pick a person of quality, um, not party. What Doug showed is that a Democrat can win. Because I'll be honest with you, as I've been campaigning this past, during 2017, I announced in June that I was running, um, people would say, well, we know as far as a Democrat, that if there's a Democrat to win, you can win, but we're not sure a Democrat can win. Well, Doug showed on December 12th that a Democrat can win. And I truly believe that I'm that Democrat. So I understand you're a member of the Blackburn Institute. Where yes, I, I'm on the right? advisory board. I understand the question I'm supposed to ask you is, what have you done for Alabama today? <laughs> Do you know every single day I'm articulating the message about the, the dire need that we have in Alabama about uh, for community correct for excuse me for community hospitals. I'm sure you're aware, and I'm, you've written about the fact that 74 percent of Alabama's hospitals, uh, community hospitals, are in the red. Even Children's Hospital here is hurting. Alabama has the leanest, meanest Medicaid program in the nation. What I'm doing for Alabama every day is I'm articulating a vision about what we could be if we really believed in ourselves. I mean, actually, truly believed in ourselves and invested in ourselves. And when we do that, I'm convinced that we're going to have a state that's going to make us the envy of the South. Very good. Sue Belcobb, thank you very much for thank coming you, in. Thank you, John. Thank you very much.